Well, we're back here at the Cave of Science, and uh, we're going to look at today's weather on uh, February 14th. It's about 10.30 in the morning. And this is also going to act as a, uh, a review for the upcoming uh, assessment on our, uh, on our weather meteorology test, uh, test on Friday. Well, what we have here, this is the, uh, the first map or radar I'm going to use. And this is a, uh, this is a radar map for Grand Rapids, Muskegon area. And you, as you can see here in this map, that we have the wind coming off Lake Michigan from the north northwest, and these are all lake effect snow bands. And it's pushing across the, uh, yeah. the middle western one third of Michigan. The lake effect snow bands, you would, you would think with the ice starting to pile up on the uh, on the lake, you wouldn't get too much, but the lake is not completely frozen over yet. And also, we have very, very cold temperatures, I think it was 12 degrees uh, just before I uh, started this, that the water is still relatively warmer than the, uh, the air flowing over it. So you will have that evaporation off the water, and the moisture will go into the atmosphere. And then as it reaches land, as you know, land is cooler than uh, the water, and so therefore the water can condense. And so here's the uh, current radar map there. I'm going to flip over to the uh, jet stream map, and the jet stream's at high altitude river air, if you will. And you can see it's flowing from a northerly direction to the south and then wrapping itself back around. And this is a cold air mass here. And again, we learned how to uh, identify our air masses. This one would be a continental. And... Uh, this one's actually going to be an Arctic, so lower KC, capital A, because it is so, so cold. Remember, the other large air mass down here we quite see quite often, which affects us, is the maritime tropical out of the Gulf of Mexico. The one that affects us most of the time in uh, the middle two-thirds of the country is this continental polar out of Canada. But this one originates much farther north, so it would be a, a continental Arctic. And it's just, just bringing all this cold air with it. And this is really, we think the jet stream is kind of the dividing line between the cold air and the warmer air. I'm going to throw up next, I'm going to throw up the uh, the wonder map. Now we look, this is weather on the ground. We looked at this quite often. And here we have our, uh, our low pressure out here. And we know the rotation around the low pressure is counterclockwise. And as you can see, especially in Michigan here, as we're looking at this, we know the staff points into the uh, direction the wind is flowing. And you can definitely see that it is flowing from a, almost a, a due north, northwesterly direction. Here we have a, a warm front, and a warm front is pushing off cooler air. And as you can see, the uh, temperatures here are cooler than behind the warm front. You know, we're in the 20s here, and it looks like 17, 8, with, at least with the stations reporting here. We have a cold front, and behind a cold front, it's a cold air mass. And again, this is that continental Arctic, Arctic that's making its way down. And as you can see, the reporting stations here, we're in the teens, and we're in the, the 20s in this direction. So this is all cold air that's getting bottled up here. And as you can see, as you get farther away from large bodies of water, uh, the temperatures do drop off, and that's that whole idea of continentality. Uh, the other, as mentioned, we got the warm air here. Here's an occluded front. That's uh, right here, and that's when the cold air mass overtakes the warm air mass. Looks like we've got some snow in this area that's not in lake effect. And so that would be when the moisture, as the moisture goes up into the atmosphere, it condenses, and it can form clouds. And uh, most moisture, especially this time of year, is going to be of the type of a nimble stratus, especially when you get the snow. Nimble meaning rain, stratus covering the entire sky. And let's see what else we have. Oops, I should go back out on this. See what else we have here. Looks like we got a bunch of high pressures out west here. You can see the sunshine. And uh, here's, we definitely see this is where that jet stream is filtering down. And this is a current as of 1036 this morning. The other map I'm going to put up here is a uh, one from NOAA. And this is uh, what the government meteorologists look at. 
And this one was done 0600 UTC time or 0600 Zulu. So that would have been taken at 1 o'clock in the morning, our time, February 14th, 2015. This is a very uh, detailed map. Let's see if I can get this to go up. And as you can see on this one, let's see if I got to get this right on the edge. There we go. Here's the outline the United States. And seeing this one was five hours earlier, the low pressure is a little bit farther west than it was on the previous map. And as we know, we're in the prevailing westerlies. So our wind will, our weather goes from west to east and also from the, and you typically from uh, the south to the north. And you saw this one here on the wonder map. This low pressure right here was actually a little bit farther out over here. So pretty good indication there. Uh, the reason I'm also showing this one, this one shows the isobars and these large barometric pressure. And again, pressure is measured with a barometer. And this is the pressure of this low air pressure system. And we have that counterclockwise rotation. And these are all the isobars here, 1016, 1012, 1008, 1004. And as you can see, they get, as you get near the low pressure, the isobars uh, values would decrease as you would expect. Notice the isobars here are really starting to get a little closer together. And so you'd have a steep pressure gradient and therefore you'd have higher wind speeds. If you look out here, you can uh, see that the uh, pressure gradients are not as extreme. The isobars are farther apart. So you would expect uh, lower wind speeds on here. Let's see if we can get in on, yeah, let's look at this weather station right here. We'll take a look at this one down here. Remember we have temperature in the upper left hand corner, uh, dew point in the bottom left. If those two numbers are fairly close together, you're going to get uh, clouds and a, a distinct possibility of precipitation. Uh, the circle itself will show cloud cover. The number in the upper right hand corner, that is the uh, barometric reading. If it's less than uh, 500, remember the, uh, the values there, you put a 10 in front of it, move the decimal one to the left. If it's greater than 500, you put a nine there and move the uh, decimal one to the left. And we covered much, you know, we've covered all this in class, but we'll go over it next week too. So let's see if we can find, these are a little small, so we'll see if we can find some here. And so you see we've got this nice rotation here. And when we, when we think of precipitation, you always look for the low pressure system because that's where you have that rising air. The rising air is going to cool, and when it cools, it can condense and you can form clouds. <coughs> Excuse me. When the clouds form, we also talked about that release of latent energy. So make sure you recognize that fact. One thing to always look for when you're looking for a precipitation at a particular station model, uh, there's three pretty good giveaways that you might get some precipitation. Uh, one is low pressure. The other one is cloud cover. And then the temperature and the dew point are relatively close together. So those are things to look at. Uh, I'm trying to find and see if we got a good one out here. Oh, here's one over here. Let's take a look over here. And we don't have any cloud cover in the circle. Pressure is, looks like that's going to be a, a 1024.8. So this one looks like it's going to be relatively high right here. And a fairly large <coughs> excuse me, difference between uh, air temperature and dew point. So you wouldn't expect any precipitation there. As we move around, oh, some other areas. These are getting a little tough to read, so I don't know if we'll be able to see it real good. But recognize that fact when you look for which one has precipitation, cloud cover, pressure, and the difference between uh, air temperature and dew point. And let's see if we have anything. Uh, this one is a pretty cool map if you're into maps at all. Let's see if we go back to our wonder map. Yeah, let's well, let's go ahead. And let's click on one of these here. Looks like we got I don't know, somewhere in the middle of the state here. 
uh, 12 degrees. Nah, we don't get the dew point here. So we'll grab another one. Let's get out of this one. Eh, let's go to this one here. Yeah, this one's not reporting dew point either. That's lousy. Let's see what this one says. Jeez, nobody's reporting their dew points. Hug. Not good at all. So this may have been doing us much good on this. Yeah, we'll try this one. I guess we're not going to get that one either. So, so anyways, the dew point would be here. Remember relative humidity, 89%, but we know uh, cold air can have very high relative humidity because it just can't hold as much. Warm air can hold a lot more uh, water moisture, water vapor. So therefore, uh, you won't find the relative humidity as high. Again, it's the term relative humidity. Well, I guess that might be it unless I can find one here. Ah, here we go. <clears throat> Looks like we're up somewhere up here. So we got a current temperature of a minus 8, dew point of minus 14. And so uh, you can definitely see the, uh, uh, that's pretty cold up there. You would think humidity is still 75%, which you wouldn't think would be that high, but the, the air is so cold, a little bit of moisture gives it a fairly high relative humidity. Uh, wind gusts from the, uh, from the north, about 18 miles per hour. Uh, pressure, 30.70, and that's inches of mercury. That's not millibars there. So, all right, yeah, I think that'll do it. And uh, we're up there in uh, Sisseton, it's like South Dakota. So interesting, sitting right here. And again, it's got a low pressure rotating around. So anyways, we'll see uh, where this goes. And uh, take a look at this, good review. You can start explaining this stuff, you'll do fine. All right, until next time, we'll catch you later.